Did you know that a bacteria called H. pylori causes acid reflux, stomach ulcers, and even stomach cancer? In this video, we'll reveal why H. pylori testing isn't great and how you can still have it even if you have a negative test. Why antibiotics don't always work to kill this bacteria and what you can do instead. How to prevent reinfection from this cancer causing bacteria. And stay to the end and I'll reveal the one supplement we use to kill this bacteria without using antibiotics. First, what is Helicobacter or H. pylori? H. pylori is an ancient bacteria that has known to infect humans since as long as we've been around. A study in epidemiological reviews from John Hopkins University estimated that H. pylori infects half the world's population. But it doesn't infect everybody in the same way. In some people, it can cause acid reflux. In some people, it causes stomach ulcers. And in some people, it can even cause stomach cancer. But on the flip side, in some people, it does absolutely nothing. It is classified as a group one carcinogen by the World Health Organization, which means it's a substance that is known to cause cancer in humans. But as I said, it doesn't affect everybody the same way, especially children. Some strains have been shown to be significantly worse than others, and we think those are the ones that seem to be causing the stomach cancer. But in some people, small amounts of H. pylori have been shown to actually be beneficial. So how does H. pylori cause acid reflux? We believe H. pylori causes reflux in two different ways. The first way is by reducing your acid production. Now, most people believe that they have acid reflux caused by too much acid. Actually, acid reflux is caused by too little stomach acid, very rarely too much stomach acid. H. pylori produces an enzyme called urease, and urease decreases your body's acid production. When that happens, the lower esophageal sphincter that's supposed to keep the acid inside the stomach doesn't close properly because of insufficient acid. And when that doesn't happen, acid can come up inside the esophagus, causing that burning acid reflux. The second way we believe that H. pylori causes acid reflux is by direct interference with that lower esophageal sphincter and by creating pressure inside the stomach. When H. pylori produces gases like hydrogen, it can create pressure inside the stomach, forcing that stomach up into the lower esophageal sphincter, creating what we call a hernia or allowing the stomach acid to come up and creating that acid reflux. But not just acid reflux, H. pylori has been shown to cause stomach ulcers too. There are two ways that we believe H. pylori is causing stomach ulcers. First is by burrowing itself deep into the walls of the stomach. And when it does that, it creates a weakness in that area, which we think is making it more susceptible to ulcers. The second way we believe H. pylori can cause stomach ulcers is almost like the body fights back against the H. pylori infection by temporarily increasing its acid levels, which can damage the walls of the stomach, creating an ulcer. We believe this is why drugs like omeprazole work so well for stomach ulcers because it temporarily reduces your body's natural acid production to allow that area to heal so that you can then carry on life without the ulcer. Finally, let's look at H. pylori and stomach cancer. If you've ever had H. pylori like I have, you'll know the pain it gives you can be a 10 out of 10 agonizing pain. This is because of the damage and the inflammation to the cells called the gastric cells of the stomach. In a study from the World Journal on Gastrointestinal Oncology, it was found that H. pylori can cause damage to the DNA of the cells of the stomach, which may lead to cancer. Now, there are lots of different types of testing available for H. pylori, including blood testing, stool testing, breath testing, and an endoscopy. The gold standard is an endoscopy. However, a study from the United European Gastrointestinal Journal found that unless you stopped your PPMI medication at least 15 days before your endoscopy, you had a 56% chance of a false negative. Personally, I believe that's why it's so difficult for people to pine H. pylori. For some reason, the urease enzyme it releases and the masking from the omeprazole means that a lot of people actually can have it and show up negative in their testing. Also, H. pylori has been shown to affect the oral cavity, the tonsils, and can colonize the esophagus, and currently we don't have a test for those regions. I've worked with many people who we believe had oral H. pylori, who took the herbs in Pylopurge, but had to open the capsules into water, swish them around the mouth, gargle, and swallow before they felt relief, and they tested negative for H. pylori in their endoscopy. The current treatment for H. pylori is two types of antibiotics plus omeprazole. We call that triple therapy. But because the bacteria is becoming more and more resistant to antibiotics, in some countries they now use quadruple therapy, which is three types of antibiotics plus omeprazole. The effectiveness of antibiotics varies from countries and studies anywhere between 70 and 90% depending on when it was done and the population of the people that they gave the drugs to. 
The problem with antibiotics is that they don't always do the job and the next line treatment would be more antibiotics for exactly the same thing. Personally, I was able to avoid taking antibiotics, which if this is something you wanna do, please speak to your doctor first, but I was able to use the herbs inside of Pylopurge, which was something I designed when I had H. pylori because I didn't wanna go for antibiotics first because of the damage it can cause to your microbiome and it doesn't always work. My thought process was, I'll use the herbs first, if that can fix me, great. And if it doesn't, I always have the backup option of the antibiotics. But as always, please speak to your doctor about medications and herbal alternatives. Finally, a huge problem with H. pylori is reinfecting yourself with that bacteria. And we recommend trying a couple of things to try to reduce the chance of you reinfecting yourself with this bacteria. First, we recommend excellent oral hygiene, which means, and especially, changing your toothbrush after H. pylori treatment, flossing daily, tongue scraping, and using a non-alcohol mouthwash. Because H. pylori can silently infect the oral cavity and we don't have a test for it, you could be reinfecting yourself with your toothbrush. Also, during periods of stress, stomach acid production is reduced. Think about it like this. If your body's running away from a lion, it's less likely to worry about digesting yesterday's dinner. So stomach acid production reduces, pancreatic enzyme uh, production is also reduced, and therefore, you have an increased chance of catching H. pylori because it loves a low acid environment. Remember, the job of stomach acid is protection against the outside world as much as breakdown of minerals from your food. Finally, people who've been taking acid suppression medications long-term may be at increased risk of catching H. pylori. I don't have any data for this, so this is my opinion, but I believe that acid suppression long-term will increase the chance of bacteria. That's how you get things like small intestinal bacterial overgrowth because it has allowed past the gastric juices and settles in the small intestine. But I think there's more, more bacteria than just the stuff in the small intestine. There could be things inside the stomach like H. pylori also causing problems. And so it's important to please speak to your doctor if you're being tested for H. pylori and you're currently taking a Omeprazole. Hopefully this video was helpful. Please like and subscribe and follow along so you don't miss out on any future videos.